hello pray and share warriors I'm just gonna do this as a do-over <laughs> because I was on the phone longer than I thought I would be but anyway I hope you had an awesome Monday I have another prayer request that's gonna be unspoken um, but God knows all the details and that's you know I, I used to go get so offended when somebody would say, I want you to pray for me, but it's unspoken. And I felt like they didn't trust me. But now I don't get offended because God knows all the details. He knows things that I don't even know. And so um, I don't get offended by that anymore. I, don't get, I think offense is a choice. I don't get offended by much. Okay, my hair kind of offends me because it's like the wet, uh, humid look. Okay, so my words for today, excuse me, are ultimate mercy and grace. Ultimate mercy and grace. We receive ultimate mercy and grace when we are saved through Jesus. It's like there is nothing that can compare to that mercy and grace and the forgiveness that we receive. And so that is what we're going to talk about tonight. And my... Okay, I just need to sit up straight. Sitting up straight would be quite helpful. Okay, so let's jump into some prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. I've got something new to pray about. Um, and let's thank God that he does extend mercy and grace through Jesus. That we have that opportunity to take our life that is broken where we are in bondage to sin. And he makes us new. God, we just thank you for the mercy and grace that has been extended to us through the sacrifice of Jesus. We thank you because you are in control and you are on your throne, God. There is no God like you. God, you are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, our refuge, and our strength. God, You are magnificent and powerful and mighty. God, you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. God, you are loving and caring, compassionate, kind, forgiving, merciful, patient. You want no one to perish, God. You invite all into your kingdom freely. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for inviting us to be your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, I lift up this situation to you. God, you know all the details. You know the solutions. You know the outcomes, God. I pray for protection for this unspoken request, God. I pray for you know what I pray for, God. You know what I'm praying for. You know what's on my heart. God, I cry out to you for all the lost, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would soften their hearts that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus, that they would be saved, God. I pray for the prodigals to return to you to repent, God, to come home where they belong. God, I pray for all the many things that are going on, all the many disasters, God, I just pray. I pray, God, that you would meet these people where they are, God, that someone would come along and be the hands and feet of Jesus 
Show them love and compassion and help them in their time of need. God, we pray for people that have lost loved ones. So many lately, God, we just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We just pray that they would feel your presence, God, in the absence of their loved one. That they would know, God, that their loved one is forever at peace. Is feeling forever love. And is feeling forever joy. And if in their body they were not able to do the things that they used to do, that they are able to do those again. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I'm going to read for you first what I wrote about this song. I really like this song. I know y'all hear that every night. I really like this song. I really like a lot of songs. I have a lot of favorites. I have a lot of songs that are tied to memories for me. I've heard this song before, but I haven't heard it in a while. So I love the song and message, What Your Mercy Did For Me. My words today, ultimate mercy and grace. This is what God offers us through Jesus. I love the lyrics of this song. I do love the lyrics of this song. I love that this is my proclamation. Mercy came and found me drew me back to Jesus and has been transforming my life since the day Jesus saved my soul. Is my life perfect? No, oh, absolutely not. It's not. And it never will be here on this earth. We're never going to seek perfection here because we are in mortal bodies that are flawed we live in a fallen world that is full of sin so we're never going to seek perfection we're never going to have perfection here can things be good oh yeah sure they can be they can be great and they can be awesome but they're never going to be perfect never okay absolutely not but the beauty of being a child of god is that I receive ultimate mercy and grace when needed. I have freedom from the bondage that once held me captive. Jesus set me free and I am free indeed. No turning back to what I once knew but just a steady pace following Jesus. That is ultimate mercy and grace. Is Jesus your Savior today? If not, call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Receive ultimate mercy and grace through salvation in Jesus. Step away from the things of the world. They will not last. Store your treasures in heaven. This world is fleeting, so call upon Jesus now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. God does not want anyone to perish. That is why he sent Jesus. Oh, I need to sneeze. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm not a I'm not a little dainty sneezer. So uh. I may have to blow my nose too. I got my big giant cup. I'm going to get me a smaller cup just for this. But when I drink out of this big giant cup, let's see, Grandy, that's my grandmother name. When I drink out of this big giant cup, I get enough water for my body. And when I drink out of those smaller cups, I forget to fill them up. So two of these is what my body requires to stay happy and hydrated. Okay, so let's move on to some scripture. And let's talk about scripture. Again, I don't even have my music in here. 
I'm just uh, not prepared. <coughs> oh. Yeah, I might have to go blow my nose in a minute. I'm trying to find some. I got. I have verses on both sides. I have mercy over here. And I have grace over here. So I was going to kind of combine them together. Okay, I liked this one earlier. First Peter 1 through 1 3. First Peter 1 3. Peter 1 3. I think I'm going to read 1 1 through 3. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of the God, of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. I'm sorry. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance inco incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you so that's what I was talking about we are going to take God is going to take this corruptible body and miraculously translate it to heaven into an incorruptible body you know that is miraculous who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have sneezed, but I couldn't help it. I may have to go blow my nose. I've already had an interruption. So I actually was here a little after seven and I had to take a phone call. I just felt like it couldn't wait until after I get through. So and I was right. I needed to take that phone call. Okay, so let's go to Okay, let's go to um, Luke 6:36 through 37. Luke 6:36 through 37. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So be therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. You know, God is so merciful. He is just so merciful. He does not give us what we deserve. Through um, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, He gives us much more than what we deserve. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy. He forgives us of our sins. He is very merciful. And we are to be merciful to others also. 
And I may cut this really short because I thought of something that might help my pastor. And I am probably going to do that. Hebrews 4.16 Alright, I'm going to read 15 too. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Jesus was tempted. Jesus went through the temptation that we went through. But he was without sin. And so let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we come boldly to the throne of grace. We have access to the throne of grace because of Jesus. Otherwise, we would not have access to God. It would be just like it was in the Old Testament where they had to send a priest to do everything. Hey, Josie, how are you? My day was good. How was your day? All right. My friend Josie is here. I'm so glad to see her because usually I'm just sitting here talking to myself. So it's good to have company. Okay, so I'm going to move it on over to Grace. So let's read 2 Corinthians 12, 9. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And this is what Jesus says. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And so that was Paul speaking, but this is what Jesus said to him. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So the grace of Jesus is sufficient for us. It is. So let's go to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. And this is how we are saved. For by grace are ye saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who were called uncircumcised, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Okay, we'll leave it there. So I was just wanting to get the grace part. Let's find a couple more. <clears throat> Let's read James 4, 6. We'll read a couple more and then we'll... Um, We'll do a salvation message, and then I'm probably going to get off of here pretty quickly because um, I need to make a phone call. Okay, James 4, 6. But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So, 
I read a little bit more. It's hard to stop. It's really hard to stop when you start reading God's Word. We already read that. And we read something close to that. All right, we already read that. Need one more about grace. All right, let's read. Let's read Titus 2, 11 through 14. Titus is way back here in the back. And it's very short, too. Oh, there we are. It's before Hebrews. Okay, Titus 2, 11 through 14 says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this perfect world. Present. <laughs> Present world, not perfect, because this world is... Far, 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 far from perfect. Present. In this present world, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. All right. Well, that was the last one that I wanted to read. I'm going to look for uh, something. I think we'll do this bracelet. We'll do salvation with the bracelet. I like that. It's pretty short. Okay, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1, 16. And so let's look at this. This is the color gold. The gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants you to have a pers wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So this dark color with a question mark, the dark color represents sin which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death. Or separation from God forever okay the first question mark is asking how can your sins be removed so that you can know God and so the red the red color represents Jesus blood Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all our sin Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. Uh, how can Jesus wash away, wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus, by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So the question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And so if you have not, just repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I 
I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so the next color is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. This, these symbols show the areas of growth. The heart emblem. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. So then the next one is read the Bible each day to learn more about God and His love. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. The next one is the water symbol. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person like being born all over uh, like being born over again. And then this one is hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then we have this one. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So that is how you get saved. So if you've said that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his only son, who is the one that offers us forgiveness, ultimate mercy, and grace. So if you have any comments, then put them in the comments. If you have any prayer requests, put them in the put them in the comments. And um, I'm going to do a blessing, and I'm going to pray. And then I have to make a phone call. Um, in Numbers 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Wow, we all need peace. Peace is a good thing. We're going to have perfect peace in heaven. When, when we all get to this picture behind me, which I love this picture, when we get there, we're going to be in perfected bodies and we're going to have perfect peace, perfect joy, perfect love, no disruptions from the world, just perfect harmony with everyone there. Okay. And we'll be able to do things that we haven't done in many years, too. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. God, we just come to you, and we just thank you. We thank you for the gift of mercy and grace that you offer us through Jesus Christ. We just thank you for all the blessings and the protection and the provision that you give us daily. And I just pray for Josie. I pray that she is feeling better. I pray for Mike and the boys. I just pray for peace, God. I just pray for... Um, well, you know what I'm praying for, God. I just pray for that. And God, we just pray for um, all the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw Jesus, draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. And we pray that you would soften hearts, God. We just pray 
for boldness to go out and to share your truth and share the gospel of Jesus, God. To do like I did today, to invite someone that's a stranger, but not really a stranger because I know her nephews and her nieces, God, to church. Help us to have the boldness to invite more people to come and learn more about you, God, and to worship you. And God, we just pray, we pray for our unspoken request tonight, God. We pray for safety and uh, protection. And do you have any prayer requests, Josie? We pray for Austin, God. We pray for these young men as they get jobs this summer and they work really hard. We just pray that you would bless them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, I think I've done everything that God called me to come and do today. And um, I uh, have an awesome rest of your night. And an awesome tomorrow and much love and cyber hugs for everyone okay God we just pray for everyone God um, everyone in Josie's family and everyone that's close to her God Without saying what's going on, God, you know what's going on. You know all the details, God. We pray for resolution. We pray for um, your favor, God. For your protection, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you too, Josie. Hey, I may call you later. I'm going to... I'm going to try to contact someone, uh, but I may call you as soon as I call them, okay? Alright, so much love, pray and share warriors, and cyber hugs, till I see you again. Good night.